Welcome everybody um, to another uh, one of our video chats. Uh, thanks for coming back again. Um, today we're going to be joined by uh, Jim Vaughn, um, Chairman of the Chamber of Commerce, and Lynn Chestnut with the uh, TSBDC. Um, as usual, we're going to be taking questions um, from the top. Um, I'll be vetting those, so if you want to go ahead and type them, please do so now. Um, but uh, Jim, why don't you take it away? Thank you, Jeremy, and uh, good afternoon to each and every one. Just uh, wanted to kick off this webinar by making a few comments, if I may, around the uh, Chattanooga Chamber of Commerce team. Uh, when this environment initially started that we're all going through at this moment, uh, we had dialogue around uh, what would be best to serve each and one of you as a business owner out in the community. And I'm very proud to say that uh, we've changed uh, several of our strategies and worked very diligently to make sure that we are sending to you appropriate uh, information to allow you the opportunity to make valid decisions as you take this journey through uh, these unchartered times. At the same time, uh, I'm very uh, proud of the team. Uh, we established uh, early on when Unfortunately, uh, we had some of our employees of our businesses uh, be furloughed. Uh, we had other businesses looking for opportunities to hire, and an uh, example of that was being a coordinator between Food City and uh, the individuals that had been furloughed to give them an opportunity to continue to be employed. So I was very proud of that, as well as uh, other teammates and other partners in the community uh, where we have discussed public policy from the Tennessee state of Tennessee and also the federal government, sharing that information with you uh, to ensure that you are well informed of what is transpiring throughout this uh, environment that we're uh, experiencing today. So uh, once again, uh, I want to say thank you for each and one of the teammates of the Chattanooga Chamber of Commerce. It makes me proud to be the chairman of this organization and at this point in time. Um, Lynn, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, JV. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm just gonna get into the information about today's topic, which are the assistance programs out there uh, from SBA. So we're gonna go through these, talk a little bit about them, and then, uh, uh, Jim and I will have some comments and we'll be glad to take questions. So the first program and the program I talked about in our last chat is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan or EIDL. This is a loan uh, up to $2 million with a rate of 3.75% with a term of up to 30 years. This is a working capital loan. It can be used for paying payments on existing debt, payroll, uh, can, accounts payable, and other monthly obligations that you would have been able to have paid had COVID-19 not occurred. Uh, it cannot be used to consolidate debt. It can also not be used uh, to expand your business. Or uh, again, I've, you have a loan on a higher rate, I wanna use the lower rate it would not be able to be used for that. Now with this program, unlike most SBA programs, you will apply directly to SBA. And S the, the website that you wanna use for information and then to apply is sba.gov backslash disaster. And along with that, there is a $10,000 advance or grant in the application and there's an online application it's been upgraded it's been streamlined it's made it much easier there is a place where you click on for the ten thousand dollars that ten thousand dollars does not have to be repaid that is a grant or an advance and it will be sent to you days after you have submitted a completed application so that's EIDL. Jim, and I know from the bank side of it, I know even though you guys are not 
uh, doing this, implementing this program, I'm sure you're getting a lot of calls. Lynn, we are, and at the same time, we're referring uh, those opportunities uh, for guidance, uh, either to uh, the direct SBA website or also to your institution for clarity of what they may have questions regarding uh, the program. And so uh, we're trying to assist in that manner to, uh, to ensure that we inform our business community appropriately. Great. One other, one other point I want to make on that one uh, that I didn't mention was uh, there is a one-year deferment on payments on that. Interest will accrue, but you have 12 months till you make your first payment on that particular program. So with that, I'll get to the second program, the PPP or Paycheck Protection Program. And this program was put together to help companies, small businesses, continue to employ people for a period of time. So this program is up to $10 million. It has a two-year term, and the interest rate is 0.5%. Now, this loan proceeds is used to cover payroll costs, most mortgage interest, rent, and utility cost over the eight week period after the loan is made. And this ensures that you keep people employed. Also, um, 75, there is a forgiveness clause in this, and I'm gonna let Jim talk about this a little more, but there's a forgiveness clause. But to get that forgiveness clause, 75% of what you borrow must be used for payroll. And there can be no payroll uh, more than $100,000 annualized for any one employee. So who do, you, who do you see about this program? You go to your lending institution. Most of the uh, lending institutions in Chattanooga are SBA approved call your institution and talk to them. They should be able to tell you that. But Jim, I'm gonna kind of turn over to you for a minute and talk about this one, because I know you've, you've been getting a lot of information coming in minute by minute by minute on this program. Lynn, you're absolutely correct. And um, I'm gonna say that all of our financial institutions here in Chattanooga are continuing to uh, review and, and share the information as it flows uh, from administration. This information continues to be fluid at the moment to get to what we call a, a final version of uh, the guidelines and document accordingly that uh, the Treasury and the administration is looking forward to uh, assist our, our business here in the community. At the same time, um, you know, uh, you were talking about the uh, grant portion of the opportunity of the loan. Uh, you know, I would say in the meantime that you ought to be reaching out and, and having a discussion around your advisors, your CPAs, your attorneys, firms, et cetera, that you rely on, on advice and, and go ahead and be looking at the opportunity of what my needs would be and determine the uh, dollar amount of capital that would be required for me to continue to move forward through this journey. But at the same time, and more importantly, is, uh, you know, to your points of what is eligible for a grant, that's the term they use for forgiveness, and it's et cetera, uh, you know, I would be working on and understanding uh, my documentation and what is going to be required to uh, validate that. So I think those are key actions that uh, everyone in the community could be doing at the moment while they're waiting for uh, the final version to uh, be established. Absolutely. And well, I want to add one other thing, and then I know, Jeremy, we're going to open it up to some uh, Q&A. Um, as Jim talked about, talking to your trusted advisors. Uh, that's that's very important. 
But I also want to caution you, anytime we have a disaster, uh, we have folks out there who want to, uh, they, they want to put, put things out there, they want to gouge people, or they want to put out false information. Be careful where you get your information. Be careful what is uh, appropriate to pay someone. Yes, you should pay your CPAs, their uh, regular hourly rates, your attorneys, uh, your financial advisors, but a lot of the information that you need, you can get from us, you can get from our friends at Colab, Launch, uh, Score, uh, without paying for. And then uh, for most of you, this process is not a difficult one. And uh, for most of you, application should be fairly easy. So don't hesitate to reach out to any of us with that. So, and and Lynn, Lynn, another yes. uh, comment I will make is uh, I know all of our uh, business community read uh, recently about Mayor Burke's uh, relief loan program, and that is still being formalized at this point in time, but it's to address uh, small businesses, 50 employees or less. And there's a grant purport, uh, portion to uh, opportunity for that as well in the program. And then at the same time, uh, some loan opportunities from 10000 to 100000 based on the needs. Uh, that program is, is currently still under uh, to be formalized. And uh, we hope to be able to uh, share that news uh, forthcoming as well in the near future. So Jeremy, we will, uh, I know you may have some questions out there that we need to answer. Okay guys, um, a little bit, we're having some technical difficulties, um, okay. but I, I do have one question. Um, someone asked if the 10K grant tie, is tied to the larger request for assistance. So the $10,000 grant portion is for the economic injury disaster loan. So, for example, if you applied for $50,000, you could click the button and then you would get a $10,000 advance. That portion does not have to be repaid. So that's, that's how the 10,000 works. And that's part of the EIDL. Uh, it is not a uh, portion of the of Paycheck Protection Plan. I would also say talk talk to your banks, talk to your financial institutions. A number of them are offering loan deferments. Uh, SBA, all SBA loans are subject to deferment for three months, and in some cases longer, depending on a case-by-case -case basis. So it's about being proactive. Talk to your financial institutions about what they may be doing uh, to help you until these, uh, until your application is processed. Uh, so you still must apply for the bigger loan in order to secure a grant? That is correct. Okay. Um, what about uh, churches and uh, places of worship? Uh, they are not included in this particular, these particular programs. There are some uh, small, private, nonprofit, secular um, organizations that are included. SBA.gov backslash disaster will get details and, and determining their eligibility. A nonprofit, uh, uh, do you want to mention the EIDL uh, for the nonprofit, that rate is 2.75. Um, the application has space in it to put in average monthly payroll. Can you add rent amounts to that? And if so, how? Well, there should be on the application. You're going to, what you're going to put in, uh, you're going to put your payroll information in, but your total request can include loan, can include rent. It can include accounts payable. Uh, you can include utilities, other things that are regular monthly obligations. And I want to mention these are obligations that you had prior 
to February 15th, 2020. Okay. Um, are, are loans collateralized? Uh, they are on the high, on the EIDL, up to 25,000 is unsecured. When it gets about 25,000, uh, they will look at taking collateral. Even if the collateral, you do not have enough equity, they will still consider it. It will not be an excluder uh, in, in or a, a automatic turn down. The big thing to remember about either one of these uh, programs, the part that you do have to pay back is SBA is looking at what is your ability to pay. If you are able to pay these in the past, that that is a pretty good determiner that you can in the future. If you were having trouble paying prior, it's probably going to be tough to qualify. Okay. Um, we have a question from uh, Stephen McLeod. Uh, my assumption is that a so-called gig-based single-member LLC that does not have payroll employees would not have relation to the payroll program. Any particular guidance at this time for where we should focus? Yeah, we, we've had a lot of folks who uh, ask the same question and, uh, you know, they're not going to meet that 75% threshold. So EIDL is more designed for them um, for uh, the purposes that they're going to need. And strategize, as Jim talked about, you know, once once this, if, if COVID-19 starts trending downward in the next month or two, and hopefully it does, uh, things are not going to go back to normal uh, that quickly. So be strategizing with your team, with your CPA around how much you're going to need to sustain you uh, for three, six, nine months, whatever uh, you and your team together come, come up with as part of your ask. Okay. Um, does the monthly payroll for the PPP count uh, contractors as well? Jim, I believe it does, doesn't it? Lynn, at this point in time, uh, it does include contractors with well documentation, is my understanding at this point in time. Okay. Um, how would a self-employed person calculate their request amount? Well, so they're going, yeah, they're going to look at, obviously, their expenditures, and then a lot of it is going to go around how they may be taking draws um, you know, SBA is going to look at all of these things on a case by case basis and you, you know, they may not take a quote salary, but they may take draws, uh, to pay themselves, uh, having accurate bookkeeping, having accurate tax return information. The thing about the application, the application is set up now where for the, uh, EIDL, where you will apply you will give information based on this tax returns or your uh, profit and loss, other things, but you will not upload at that point. They will request additional documentation as they are taking your application uh, as they're uh, reviewing it. PPP, Jim, uh, I'm sure you guys are going to be collecting things, but I think that's still yet to be determined what all they're going to be asking you to, to accept, correct? That is correct, Lynn. At this point in time, it, we haven't pr been provided a clear guidance on what uh, would be necessary for appropriate documentation. But uh, at, at the same time, that goes back to what you can be doing worthy as far as investment of time to get prepared for this application is uh, trying to uh, understand uh, the calculation of your of your payroll the amount you could qualify for at the same time understanding the breakdown uh, as you had alluded to earlier of what could be up to 75 percent for uh, the grant portion and then lastly and, and keep in mind uh, the uh, 
the opportunity of um, what is the remaining balance and how will that be serviced going forward? Okay, um, I, I think we'll uh, leave it on a final question here because um, we've. Th I know there's there's a lot of questions surrounding um, all, all of this um, and the aid package. There will, there's probably more coming down the pike. It's only get, going to get more complicated going forward. Um, if if people still have questions, if they want to talk to you, Lynn, or someone else at the TSBDC, um, wh what do they do? So. We are obviously working virtually, but we are monitoring. So they can call our office 423-756-8668, or they can go to our website, tsbdc.org and request help. We, are, we have put together some information that we're more than happy to send out to them uh, via email and then we can also schedule time. Uh, you would imagine we're staying very, very, very busy. Again, I want to mention our, our resource partner, SCORE, Chattanooga. They can reach out to them. They're an SBA uh, counseling arm. Launch Chattanooga and Colab. All of these organizations and also, obviously, the Chamber of Commerce you guys can, can filter some of that through uh, as well. Uh, so please make sure, reach out to any of us. May we will make sure you get accurate information, understanding that, especially with the PPP, we're still getting information as we speak and we'll probably continue to get uh, additional information going forward. Jim? Okay. Um, and, it, and if they have any further questions after today, uh, just a reminder to folks, we'll be, we'll be doing a round table next week on Wednesday. Um, so if, if you missed something, uh, Lynn, Lynn will be joining us again for that, as well as someone from the city um, and some of the other organizations that are all going to be offering assistance uh, to businesses that have been affected by the shutdown. Um, so you'll have another chance there um, or just get in touch directly um, with us or, or with the TSBDC. Um, anything you guys want to add before we wrap it up? Jeremy, I just would, Jeremy, I just would like to say that we'll all be stronger as a community after we get through this journey together and uh, hope everyone remains safe. I think that's a great note to close on. Um, thank you both for doing this. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, and we'll see you guys back here again later.